Okay, so this is a tutorial I'm actually very excited to record because we're making alien artifacts. Or basically, I can't really name this thing, so I'm just going for some generic shit that a lot of people might type in and get a lot of views. The cool thing about this tutorial, though, is I actually stumbled across this result completely uh, by accident as I was playing with geometry nodes. And the surprising thing is, even though I can get a lot of variations and a lot of complexity out of this, it doesn't actually take that many nodes. So in this tutorial, we're making alien artifacts, long story short. I don't know why I needed to ramble so long. Uh, before we do that, uh, this video is sponsored. So uh, first, let me talk about the sponsor of this video, and then let's make some of those sweet alien artifacts. I'll be right back. So once again, for the third month in a row, this video is sponsored by Micro Center. Thank you, Micro Center. If you haven't heard about them, it is the one-stop shop to get your electronics, networking device, basically anything that uses electricity. I mean, that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, Micro Center has all this kind of stuff. It has 30,000 items in stock in its physical locations, and they've got a booming online store. They are running deals, not some of the time, not occasion. They're running deals all the time, okay? And when you go to the in-store location, and by the way, those deals are for in-store and online, but when you go into the in-store locations, their associates so friendly. You don't know what to buy. You don't know where something, they're, they're, they're there to help you and they're knowledgeable. And make sure to check out Micro Center's new lineup of business solutions if you're into that kind of thing. We're talking workstation computers from Dell and Supermicro as well as the new Supermicro workstation slash server builder available at certain Micro Center locations. This is for the boys that are chugging along with their big computer name. Maybe you're doing VFX, maybe you're running an Excel sheet that's so insanely big. I don't mean to break the fourth wall here, but when doing these ad reads, they're always like, you know, share an experience. If you've ever been to a micro center to talk about it and really i have one main experience so i'll just talk about it uh, i went in to get a hard drive or an ssd or one of the i think it was a hard drive honestly um i went in there didn't know what aisle to go in. i'm like yeah uh, sir uh where <laughs> and he's like oh here and then he's like oh do you want 7200 rpm 10,000 rpm guided me through the whole thing five minutes ten minutes i don't know probably five minutes in and out got the thing I needed and then left. Micro Center is great, but you don't need to spend all day there. They're designed to get you the thing you need and then you're out of there. And here's the big news. Micro Center wants to offer you new customers 240 gig SSDs for free. When you click my link in the description, you're going to see this page telling you all about the offer. It is for new customers only. It's only valid in store, right? They're not going to like teleport it to you. You, you got to go to a Micro Center location and there's no purchase necessary, which is kind of the most insane thing. Of course, there's a limit of one per customer because they don't want you showing up and taking 100 240 gig ssds but you know even if you get one that's a crazy good deal so micro center thank you for sponsoring and now the tutorial okay and we are back and for me it was a second for you it was a minute or two i make that joke every time it never ceases to just piss myself off okay Here's how we make this thing super easy. So uh, it's gonna be entirely geometry nodes. I'm using 3.2 alpha. Uh, if you use 3.1, everything should be compatible. Okay, let's go. Uh, take the cube, go to geometry nodes, make it a geo nodes thing. So the cube has a modifier. What's the modifier? It's described by this node group. The magic happens in what we do in this node group. So uh, if you think about the alien artifact I made, I'm just gonna get rid of the group input. Um, you can't really tell how it was made. It looks very complicated, but you can see it's kind of like a lot of these components almost spinning, not in unison, but a bit apart. Uh, so we need to capture that idea. So here is how I actually made this. It's surprisingly simple. So I started off with a curved circle. Why? Uh, because the circle lets us spawn in a bunch of objects. If you think about the circle as a series of vertices, well, I can't really go into edit mode here, but we can control the number of vertices that make this up. Uh, you can think of this as a, a circular way uh, to spawn a lot of stuff. So take the circle, and with that circle, we are going to instance on points. So for each point of the circle, we are going to instance an object. What object are we going to instance? What object are we bringing into this world? A cube. A cube. Uh, because uh, we can reshape these uh, cubes. That, again, is being copied every single time to kind of look like swords or skewers. And that's what we're going for. Uh, so take the cube dimension. So again, uh, here we have a cube. You can make it X, Y, Z scaling, and then it's going to get copied. Uh, take this. I'm going to make it super, super tiny, and then I'm going to make it longer on the X axis. It could be the Y or the Z, uh, but I find X is nice. And we're, we're also going to reshape it a bit more by making it thinner and all that, but don't worry about that now. So a circle full of cubes. The next uh, insight I had while randomly playing around with this is I don't want... 
um, all the cubes to be facing the same way. They're all facing to the right. So even if we do get all of the spinning, uh, th th there's kind of a lack of symmetry here uh, that I'd want to fix. So you could see uh, when I play around with these rotations, uh, so some of them rotate on the X, some of them on the Y, and you can almost see there's an optical illusion of there being this like three-dimensional cylinder that there isn't. Again, this is all on the uh, XY plane. Uh, you can see when we rotate on the Z axis, though, uh, this is going to be the key uh, to getting these all kind of out of alignment uh, together. Um, let, let me explain. So to get each one of these uh, cubes to be pointing outwards, kind of like the sun, right? You're in kindergarten, you're drawing the sun, you got your sunglasses and all that, and then you got the rays shooting outwards. Uh, this is what we want, each cube shooting outwards instead of all pointing to the side. Here's how we do that. Uh, because because we used a curve uh, circle and not a mesh circle, uh, this is a curve object, and then we're inst instancing things. Uh, the key idea here is because this is a curve, curve tangent, uh, this thing that gives us information about kind of the direction or the orientation of the circle, um, it's going to work because it's a curve. So take curve tangent, and you might think, oh, take this, plug it into rotation. It almost works, kind of. If anything, this gives it its uh, own unique result, you know? No child left behind, no geo nodes, uh, too ugly, you know? Um, but uh, the, this curved tangent, you can see what it's doing is it's giving us a rotation different uh, for each one of the cubes. I, I just want to modify it to make it work. So here's what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to explain it. Use an align Euler to vector node and connect it to the vector slot, and then play with these until it's correct. It happens to be Y. Let, let me explain what this is. So uh, we first have a curved circle. Do, do you guys care about the math? I'll, I'll just go over it. So here we have a curved circle. It's this curve oriented clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. And what the tangent is, this curved tangent, is it tells us which direction is kind of brushing along the circle. This is called the tangent line. There's a name for it. I haven't taken calculus in a while. So something about slope or something. Uh, th this is the uh, tangent line uh, to each one, each point on the circle. Um, this almost tells us what... Uh, rotation we want because you can see it's changing as we're going here. Uh, this align Euler to vector just kind of does a thing <laughs> that makes it correct. I wouldn't worry about it too much, but just so you know, the tangent gives us rotation information and I just needed to modify it to make it work. Okay, this is taking forever. Uh, we have this. Uh, what do we have control over? The size of the circle, and then they're going to spawn here, and the number of things. Um, Next, what I want to do is I want each of these to be rotating on its own axis, right? So they're oriented like the sunbeams, but I want them to be rotating. So for that, I'm going to use a rotate instances node. Why? Because we instance things. Now each one of these cubes is not geometry anymore. There's only one original cube. We copied it. Uh, therefore, we want to rotate instances since we're dealing with instances. You can see you play with X, not correct. You play with the Y, that's actually the one we want. I want it rotating about the middle like that. Uh, but you can see we get a whole bunch of different... So you could see you can make a result out of this, some kind of sawtooth prolapsed... Uh, I make that joke too many times... Um, thing. I'm going to be messing with the Y rotation. So how do I want to do this? I want to make it all procedural. So I'm going to take the rotation. This is a new feature, kind of. You take, you drag, you see this plus sign, you drop it, and it lets us actually type something in. So I want uh, to control the rotation with a, you know, a combined X, Y, Z. Um, and you can see it automatically connects that. Uh, more so, the Y, which is what we care about, so I just isolated it. I want this to be animated over time. So instead of doing keyframes or drivers, we're doing something a bit smarter. Take the Y, again, use this trick, and we want to animate it with time. And seconds is fine. So you can see what it's doing. Seconds is kind of dependent on our frame rate. You make this 60 frames per second. Well, I guess it doesn't, because it's seconds. Frames would, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, so what, what I was getting at is I want this to be 30 frames per second, but it seems to be independent of the frame rate since seconds are seconds. It's going to be accounting for that. Either way, I want this to be animating over time. So that, that's working. Um, but it's kind of looking stale and boring. So how do we take this kind of jellyfish expanding thing and make it work for us? Well, I don't want all of these to be rotating at the same time. We want to break up some of the symmetry at visual interest. So um, if you think about it, this is what's driving the rotation, this time function. If I was to add or subtract or multiply or do anything to this, you could see it's going to alter it a bit. Um, but it's going to do it all uniformly. So 
if we take a, uh, a property of the circle, so remember the circle has a bunch of points, each point gets a cube, blah, blah, blah. If I say for each point have kind of an offset to the rotation, then we're good. How do we do that? Well, each point is given an index number, index. Remember, a circle, if we were to look at this uh, spreadsheet that nobody uses, <laughs> uh, the circle is composed of 32 points. I can make that less or more in the spreadsheet. But you can see there's 0, 1, 2, 3. These are the indices, the indexes, the indices of uh, the points. Either way, uh, each one has a number. You take it, you add it, and now you have some randomization. Um, and actually a very predictable way. Each one is offset by exactly one radian. Uh, from the last. Uh, if you wanted to be fancy, you could make it pi radians or pi over 2 to keep it nice, but I found that this actually looks quite nice. So again, what we're doing here is everything's rotating, but now I've just offset it each by its own index number. Now, as I was playing with this, I got to this stage, and I'm like, oh, we could do some cool stuff with it. And then I accidentally did this next step, and this is where the magic is. At this point, what I accidentally did and discovered is if you take the radius and bring it down, not to zero, because when you type in zero, it does this. Why? Uh, because it can't calculate curved tangents when you prolapse it to a single point. When you make it very, very small, just slightly bigger than zero, you could see everything gets bundled together because we had this and then we're squishing it together. It gets bundled together and you can almost see a bit of order, but not quite yet. So here's what I did. Uh, let's mess with the cube. Remember the cube that we are instancing? Uh, I'm going to make it thinner, just so it has a bit more readability. I'm going to make the radius of this just a bit bigger, not necessarily you know, that close to zero. Every time, just there. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Um, I'm also going to mess with the cube a bit more, make these slices thinner and not as long. And it kind of looks the same, but if we bring up our resolution quite a bit, now you can see where the magic is happening. Um, I don't know if there's any significance to if this number is divisible by something or not. Maybe divisible by 10 is a good bet. And 5, 200 is probably a good number. You see we do this, and this is where the magic starts to happen. Now, why does it look like this? You could think about it, you could rationalize it, you could explain it, but then the magic is going to be gone. Long story short, this uh, index offset um, kind of becomes more visually apparent as uh, we change uh, certain things about this. So this is kind of the setup I did, and I'll show you lighting and all this. But first, let me explain why this fucking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, not counting this one, 10 node setup is so magical. It's magical because if I take the radius, bring it down, now we have this cool little sphere doing a thing. If I, um, I guess we should add one more node. I want to have a uh, control over how much the index is influencing this. And this one's actually big. Um, if I change this, whoa, now we have this kind of blossoming effect. I make it not zero, because zero is kind of weird. But you make it any tiny number. You have like Mobius strips uh, coming out of this. You have this complicated design. Uh, you have the original one. And you combine this with some of the radius things from before, and you're starting to get super, super interesting results. Look at that. Like, you wouldn't expect that all this is possible, and now we have these spirals generating. All of this is from a single node network. And let's not forget that uh, we have control over these um, the cubes that are coming out. So you can almost think of those as your slices, and uh, you can give it different shapes. Okay. So what I'm going to do at this point is, again, we don't really need to care about why it looks so beautiful. We just appreciate that it does. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a nice uh, setup. So I'm just going to pick a number. You can see, again, like, look at that. Uh, I'm just going to pick a nice number that gives us a cool-looking effect, and then we're just going to set this up for a render, for an example render. So I think this is pretty similar to one of the ones I showed. Um, let's take this very simple thing. It's loopable because the whole thing is... Um, the whole thing is periodic because it's it's rotation. Like, yeah. um, what's the point? Uh, let's render this and make it look good. So I didn't even do that much work for this one either. So I just sent it through cycles because you can see it gives us all this nice global illumination and shadows. And we don't need to do that much work to get this to look good. In fact, uh, I just set up a basic scene uh, with a plane and probably, yeah, probably some walls. Although, I don't like the fact that the walls are casting shadows. Hmm. I say let's just make it a plane. 
And I think what I did is I made the background black, so the only light source is coming from this light panel that we can't see, but you know, we have that. And uh, let's just make some basic materials for this. So this is actually, you think this is kind of the hard part of the tutorial, making it look good? Not even, this is easy. So for the plane, I'm selecting the plane, I'm making a material. That material is gonna be black-ish. Doesn't need to be perfectly black. In fact, uh, there's an argument to make it like shiny, so you could see the reflection, uh, if you care about that. Uh, but let's set up our camera. The camera, we're gonna make it orthographic so we can zoom in. So it doesn't, it's not gonna have any perspective. I think that looks pretty good. And I think the rest of this is just gonna be some basic lighting. So first of all, I'm gonna make this high contrast. I like the look of that. And now you can see when we move the light, I'm moving it on the Z axis. We just bring it a bit above the plane. So I'm just moving it on the Z axis again. We get this kind of nice reveal looking thing. Again, this isn't exactly the setup I did, uh, but it's similar. And then uh, for this, we can give it a material. Although if we try to mess with it, nothing's gonna happen because uh, it's driven by geometry nodes. Hopefully everything is making sense here. It's it's a pretty simple project, but the, the applications is everything. Uh, with geometry nodes, after we do this whole thing, we instance, we uh, can get rid of that, we do whatever. Uh, I want to apply a material so that it works. So I'm going to set material. What material? The first one. Now when we change the color, um, it changes it in real life. Uh, I think what I did for this is I made it metallic. <laughs> Long story short. And to get it to even have a bit more, just a tiny bit more visual interest. Uh, the cube, I didn't want these sharp edges because I think it makes it a little too, you can kind of tell a bit too much what I did. Uh, you take this and you smooth it out with a subdivision surface. So I'm gonna level one, two, three, and you could either do it like that. So you have these like dragon scales. I don't think I even did that for mine. Maybe I will now. Uh, that looks cool. Or what you can do is you can increase the crease, increase genius uh, to kind of retain some of those sharp corners and in fact while we're here let's uh, set shade smooth maybe add one more level and look at that that is something it's impossible to not make this look good it just kind of looks good inherently um, if you wanted to get a bit fancy uh, with the metal let's see you can make it you don't want to make it too shiny because then the lighting is an issue uh, you could try anti tropic this is like that effect you see on the bottom of a pan or a pot. If you've ever cooked in your life, if you haven't, go learn a new skill. <laughs> um, it's that kind of thing that metal does. It also does it on a penny. Um, it's hard to explain, so I'm, I'm just not gonna. But uh, you can mess around with this and get different kinds of uh, metallic effects. I'm just gonna go with the simple metal. So you take this, uh, you render it, and th that's the alien artifact. It literally is that simple. So. Um, at this point, right, all we have to do to get different results, since we have the lighting, we have everything, is uh, let's change some of these numbers. I'm going to make it kind of like a tighter sphere, change our index offset to give us a different thing, and now we have this kind of pine cone looking thing. And you could do a whole bunch of stuff with this. And don't forget, do not forget that the number of instances we have is also a thing to consider. Maybe you want less to keep it visually simple, or a lot to make it visually complex. Look at that. It's kind of like a grenade or something. Um, either way, I think I've said my uh, piece about this. So let's let's back out of this tutorial. I, we went longer for than I thought I did. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the this tutorial. I know it was a simple one, but it's the kind of thing that I think a lot of people would be into because it's geometry nodes, yes, but it's not too complicated. So it kind of appeases everybody. Either way, uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, well, it, it doesn't matter. I'm going to talk about Patreon right now. So get ready. Uh, Patreon, there's a link in the description. Why should you join? Why should you join the 750, 60? Might even be more now. People that are active patrons to this channel and the CG Matter channel. Well, one, can 750 people be wrong? Maybe. Uh, but here's what they get in return. So when you become a patron, you don't just fund this channel and the other one you do, but you get three things in return. You get blend files. So this blend file uh, with all the parameters you can play with, you can just download it. You don't need to make it yourself. I've uploaded hundreds of blends over the last couple of years. You get access to all of them immediately. So years of project files, just there. One. Uh, two, you get early access to tutorials, uh, generally. Sometimes there's a sponsorship thing and I can't release it early, but generally uh, you get to see the video at least a day early, sometimes a week early as I'm doing my secret project that I'm not talking about. And... Um, 
third, uh, exclusive tutorials. I need to figure out what I want to do this month. I think there was this effect shot that I did in the polycam video on CG Matter, if that came out already, uh, that I want to go over. So exclusive tutorials are this, uh, it's just a bonus tutorial that's not available for free on YouTube. All of them are, except for those. Uh, just extra tutorials where I go in-depth on how I make a shot. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in that or you just want to support the channel without that, that's cool too. Uh, thank you. There's a link in the description. Uh, check it out. Thank you, current patrons. You guys are awesome. And uh, that's it. Goodbye.